All right, here we go. Now, I don't know what happened to my last video, but let's try this again. Gonna give everybody a couple minutes to get, or seconds rather, to get logged in because you know I always post a replay. Not everybody's able to catch me live, but that's fine. Just gonna give it a couple more seconds. Ooh. And then I'm gonna wrap it up. Oh, never mind. I'm gonna start now because it's 808. And that's my favorite. <laughs> Eight is my number. So today I want to talk about why it's important or how you can find the light in the darkness. And it's important to always keep that elevated train of thought or that light at the end of the tunnel right or that silver lining around that dark cloud because when you allow dark things to cloud you when you allow dark thoughts dark actions dark energy whatever the case may be to cloud you it stifles the possibility or it stifles the solution or it stifles the resolution or it stifles the things that would be coming to you to help you be great in whatever situation it may be. So first I'm going to talk about why you should always find the bright side of things. And although you may say, you know, it sounds it's easier said than done. It can be done. No one said it was going to be easy. And most things in life don't that are worth having, rather, don't come about easily. So don't take my words and feel, you know, she doesn't know what she's talking about because I apply these things all the time. And the more I practice it, the more I build a habit of seeing the bright side of situations, even when things may seem kind of dark and glim, glum. So when you focus on positive things, when you focus on solutions, it gives you hope. It helps build that hope and it helps that momentum going in that same hope space. If you allow yourself to go along the lines of what ifs, what can go wrong, what's going to go wrong, what's going to happen, then you're going to continuously get more of that because what you focus on grows, right? You may have times where you're saying, man, it just, when it rains, it pours. It's just one thing after another, one thing after another. That's because what you focus on grows. So you want to always look for some type of resolution. Sorry, I'm trying to change it so I can see my face because I look so dark. <laughs> it's darkness, right? Maybe I should go stand under my... Pergola. Okay, bear with me, guys. Let me move. Uh, I want y'all to see my face. Hey, Pedro. Okay, here we go. Can y'all see me now? Yes, good. <laughs> hey, bro. All right, so sorry, not such a pretty background, but hey, y'all. Thank you. Thank you for the likes. So when you focus on things that don't serve you or when you focus on things that seems to bring you more negative you, it becomes like a chain reaction and as you start that chain reaction as you go it continuously just grows it continuously grows it's like a train building momentum right so as that train starts to build a momentum now you're going you know five miles per hour crap I'm late to work. 10 miles per hour. Crap. My boss is here and he's going to talk crap. 15 miles an hour. Damn it. There goes that co-worker that's always in my doggone face. 20 miles per hour. Crap. Now the coffee maker isn't working. 25 miles per hour. Man, now they moved at the deadline for my project that I've been procrastinating on and waiting on forever. Now it's going. 30 miles per hour. There's no way I'm going to get this project done in time. This sucks. I hate this job. I, I have to work through lunch. Oh my goodness. 
50 miles per hour. I didn't work through lunch. Now I'm having to stay late to hit this deadline for the project that I have to do. My coworker is still here talking in my ear. And now my children are calling me, telling me that they are ready for me to come home and make dinner. 60 miles per hour. Okay, fine. I finally get out of it. I'm out of work. I, I stress myself, but I got the project done. It's okay. It's all right. Let me back it up, right? Now you're down to 55 miles per hour, but now you're stuck in traffic because you stayed work, you stayed at late work, you stayed at work late, and now you're stuck in traffic and it's a bad accident. So now you're at 75 miles per hour towards the negative. You get to, you get home, and even though you told the children to take something out the freezer so it can start to defrost, they forgot to do it. Now you have to go spend your last $20 to go get something to eat. Now you're at 120 miles per hour because now you spent your last to go get something to eat to make sure that you and your children can eat for the day. You get home, and your mom calls with some horrible bad news. Now you go to sleep with the horrible bad news that your mom didn't let loose on you. You wake up in the morning and you're resonating on the horrible things that happened to you the day before. And and you get up and you start that same cycle all over again in the same momentum now you're at 250 miles per hour in the negativity just going and going and going and going and that's how it works that's how you go from having a bad 10 minutes to a bad 10 years that's not something that you want to continuously do so how do you stop that how do you stop it in your tracks how do you say no I'm not gonna veer off into that right <laughs> sorry guys you get into work you're running late. Call your boss. Boss, I'm running late. This, it happens. I apologize. It wasn't something intentional. It won't happen again. I'll be in about 15 minutes. You get in, that coworker with that nasty attitude, mm, you always late, you late again. Oh, yeah, you know, it, it happens. Traffic is bad. I have a family. I'm not sure if you have one as well, but hey, give her a smile and you keep it pushing. Now she's wondering, why is she smiling? Why is she giving me a smile? I was just stank and she's still smiling with me. You understand how you can change that around immediately? Even though she's miserable and even though you ha are late to work, that doesn't mean that you have to continue on in that misery. That doesn't mean that you have to play into it because there is a saying that misery loves company, right? So if you continue on in that same miserable trait with your miserable coworker, and then you get down to your desk and you see that you now have a project that's due, they done moved up the deadline, hi. <laughs> My husband, y'all, he's so childish. So if I have positive thoughts, it's going to accumulate and manifest with positive actions. That's what you're exactly. trying to say? Exactly. That's what I'm going to say. Because now when you sit down to your desk and you see that, hey, you don't have a project moved up, the deadline done moved up, it doesn't matter because you know that you can conquer it. You know that you can win it. You have all the tools and the resources that you need. You've been procrastinating, but sure, whatever. What does that matter? Because you know that you can get it done because you know that you're a winner. And even if you don't get it done, what's going to happen? What's the worst that can happen? What is the worst that can happen? If you get fired from a job, you can go and get another job. You know why? Because those things are replaceable. All those, all these things that we put so much value on that we stress ourselves out about, it can be replaceable. Don't interact with that miserable coworker. Don't relate to stressing yourself out and working through your lunch. And now you're having just a big tumbleweed of action. If you get the project done, you get the project done. And I'm not saying screw your job because everybody has things they have to take care of, right? Money makes the world go round, but you don't have to stress yourself out about it. And if you continuously tell yourself that, you know what? I got this. I got this. You know what happens? Just like that oh my God, this is such a horrible day, brings you more horribleness, your I got this, I got this, brings about more positive results. Now, you have a coworker that comes to you and say, hey, I saw that they moved the deadline up, and I know that you're swamped, I know that you've been kind of behind, but I have some time, I can help you get this project done. Let's work together and knock it out. All because of that positive thought, now you attracted someone else who's in that same frequency as you. Now, you work, you didn't go to lunch on your regular time, but it's okay. You went a little bit later, but at least you went to lunch. Now you ate. Now you're with this coworker who happens to love the same things that you love. You all have the same hobbies in common, and you wouldn't even know because you normally don't speak to her. Because as soon as you walk into work, the miserable coworker says something to you, and you shut off your whole complete balance. So you block anybody else that could come in. 
But now, because you're receptive, you gave that coworker a smile. She's like, oh, girl, I saw the way you handled Susan today. I saw her when she said that sly remark, but I saw your response and I didn't even know you had a smile that big. That's why I wanted to come and help you because I know things have been going on with you. And here it is. You understand? The universe has a way to bring you things to help work for you, but you have to allow it. And if you're in a state of closed offness of negativity, then you're not going to be able to get any more positive things into your life. You're not. And it's important to always find that balance, like my husband would say, right? It's important for you to always find that silver lining because positivity, happiness, joy, peace, all of that actually resonates at a higher frequency. It's scientifically scientifically proven that when you smile, that when you laugh, the endorphins that are released in your body has healing powers. So you have to continue to focus on the things that can go right. Whether you believe that they're going right in your favor or not. But just by making little conscious decisions of taking those one, two steps of saying, hey, You know, I'm not going to respond to to Susan's miserable behind today. No, I'm not going to let this deadline stress me out. My children called me, told me that they're hungry. But you know what? (laughs) I forgot that I had leftovers in the freezer wrapped up. So it's nothing. And when I get home, I'm just going to pop them in the oven and we'll be good to go. Now your momentum is building in the positive way. You just turn things around. It's important. It's so important to do that because by the recent the recent events in our, our, I, I guess worldwide, not even country, because Kobe was internationally known, right? And the recent events that, that shook us as a whole, as a nation, I, for one, was I'm not a fan of Kobe. I'm not hating on him. I respect him. He is a god in his own right. And all my positive thoughts and feelings and healing energy goes to his wife and his children but in that in that one circumstance of death that could consume us with so much sadness that could have people derail i spoke to some people yesterday that when they heard the news like that was it like they shut down their day and it carried over into today right now it's monday you got to get to work and it's carrying over oh we lost him on sunday we lost nipsey on sunday you know he was so young plus his daughter what was in store but how i chose to deal with it and it's just me it's just me because of the way that i understand how things work how i understand how things work i know that Kobe is not lost. I choose to see that silver lining and embody what he embodied, embody the energy that Kobe had. So now in doing that, instead of me shutting down and, you know, it's horrible, you know, one of our our icons, one of our idols, one of our gods have been lost along with his precious, young, beautiful daughter, beautiful soul, beautiful child. Instead of saying, this is what's going to bring me down and now I can't carry on because this is a bunch of bull, whatever story you choose to believe and tell yourself. Instead of doing that, I chose to say, you know what? Kobe was a hustler. Kobe was only 41, but look at all the great things that he did. Look at all the great things that he accomplished. How can I carry on that legacy? What would Kobe do? Hey, babe, what would Kobe do in this situation? Look back at the example and what it is that he left behind and choose to take solace in that and not allow the sadness or the sorrow to weigh you down because that's not gonna allow you to be productive in the long run. Embody what that person encompasses, embody that person's energy, and that goes for anyone, not just Kobe, that goes for your auntie, for your grandmother, for your parents, for your brother, your sister, whoever it is. In that passing, find that silver lining, find that positivity and hold on to it with all your life and allow that energy to give you hope and give you peace of mind that that promise that they let out of hey this is what I'm going to do for society right Kobe was a young man in his right but again look at all that he accomplished 
it's important to continue in that. He didn't have time for negativity. That's not what he embodied. He focused on positivity and allowed him to continue being great. This man was a god of basketball. But you know what he found his true joy in was when he finally retired and started writing books. He started publishing. He got into the movie industry, doing things to build up our youth and build up our society as a whole. And that is something that we all need to do. And it's not that Kobe had a head start because he didn't. He just always chose to find the positive in a negative situation. His game wasn't going right. What did he do? He switched it around and told himself another story. And that's what kept him in that same momentum of positive things happening. He kept attracting more and more and more. Birds of a flat feather flock together. Yeah, he won an Oscar. Exactly, Natalie. Right? Birds of a feather flock together. Not just in one aspect, but in all aspects. You want to be a millionaire? Go hang around some millionaires. Go put yourself in that situation and start doing exactly what it is that they do. If you're doing something that you don't like, get out of it. And if you can't get out of it, if it's not something you can immediately change and get out of, then you need to start finding the positive things in whatever it is that you're doing so it can help you get that momentum so you can get up out that situation. You don't like the job that you're in? Start working in something that gives you passion. I, I was talking to someone. Oh, mosquito. I was talking to someone the other day. And, and I'm going to say this and I'm going to wrap it up. But I asked them, what is your passion? And she was like, she doesn't know. I was like, well, what are you? What do you do for work currently? And she was in the medical field. And I said, well, is that your passion? And she said, yeah, sort of. She likes helping people. But where she is isn't really allowing her to flourish and do what it is that she really wants to do because she enjoys helping people but she wants to have the freedom to do it in a more holistic way so what she did uh, sorry guys yes I'm reading the comments yes Natalie yes baby he is a 70s baby 70s babies are amazing and yes and when the game did change that's when Kobe did it and you know what Kobe played the game at a time when it was harder. It, LeBron James, nothing away from him, but Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, um, um, all the all the greats. Um, I don't want to say Alonzo Mourning because he was kind of at the turn, but you know, <laughs> all the all the greats. You know, coming from the seventies, the eighties, early nineties, it was harder. It was hard to play that game. So, <sighs> yes, yes. Oh, hi, Joanne. Thank you, baby. You're awesome, too. You're amazing, too, Joe. So, uh, speaking to uh, the, the woman that I was speaking to, um, she said she wants to do it in a more holistic way, but she's not quite sure how. So, I asked her, what type of approaches are you looking for? And she mentioned she wants to do CBD. I said, okay. Well, hey, if you want to do CBD, that's amazing to do. You can get into that right now. Yes, Isaiah Thomas, Natalie. You can get into that right now. And there's no, there's nothing holding you back from that. You have a medical license. Just because you're not working in a hospital doesn't mean that you can't take your practice outside. You're properly insured. Go and start talking to your patients. Go and start talking to people in your family and just saying, hey, you know what? I would like to try using CBD to supplement what it is that you have going on, right? I'd like to start introducing, you know, natural things into your diet. Or I'd like to introduce um, this the CBD into your massage therapy or whatever the case may be. And she said, well... I don't know if I can make money doing that. I don't know who I would talk to. Like, where would my clientele come in? Because my family isn't very supportive. And I told her, listen, when you move in your passion, when you do things that make you happy, then other, the universe gives you more things to make you happy. The universe is going to bring you the clients. The universe is going to bring you the people who wants to utilize that. And the universe is going to open the doors for the opportunity of things that you cannot even imagine. And I had that talk with her about a week and a half ago with somebody I met just in the store and we were just talking. I got a text from her yesterday, as a matter of fact. 
after I had just had a conversation with somebody else about CBD products that they were selling, I got a text from her saying that she has her auntie who she never thought would even entertain the idea, jumped on board and said, yes, she will be her first guinea pig. Look at that. Somebody who she didn't even think. But sometimes we're so close to judge and make decisions for others and saying, you know what? They don't want that. They don't want that. They don't need this. They don't need that. We make decisions for them and we talk ourselves out of it because we are scared of what the unknown is. Now, when she started moving in that positivity and saying, I'm going to do what it is that I really want to do. There you go. Listen, you can make money doing anything. You can make money doing anything, whatever makes you happy. People are millionaires who cut hair for a living. People are millionaires who take out the garbage for a living. There are people who are millionaires that that study ants. <laughs> literally, there's study of ants. How many species are there? And literally, they're making money by it. Because there's always people that need things. We're in a time where you can make money with your mind. So why not put your mind to work? But how do you do that? By following the momentum. And how do you follow the momentum? By building the momentum. And how do you build the momentum? One step at a time. But it doesn't work by you just going and saying today, oh, 2020 New Year's resolution. Oh, I'm not going to do this no more. I'm not going to do that no more. That's not the way it works. Because for since 2010, you've been doing one thing. So now you think that... 10 years of momentum going one way is going to change overnight like that? No. That's why there's a National Quitters Day on the 17th of the month. 17 flipping days in. It takes 21 days to build a habit. And 17 days in is when it's National Quitters Day. People not even making a habit. They're not even sticking to it long enough to make it a habit. 90 days for a lifestyle. That's March. 90 days for a lifestyle. Also nature's new year make a committed decision today that whatever you are doing that does not serve you you stop it in the track you go to sleep you wake up and you are a nude you are made anew for my biblical folks in the refreshing of your mind every day every morning when you rise it is a new day. Choose to not pick up the momentum that you've been carrying along for the past 10, 15, 20 years and make a committed decision that, no, I'm going to change the habits that I have and start doing things that are going to bring me more positivity. So we don't speak negativity into existence, Natalie. Exactly. Make little decisions, but you have to become aware of it. You have to be conscious of it. What are the little things that you do? What are the little stories that you tell yourself that is continuously causing you to go back to the same negative things? How can you expect something different in your life if you continue to do the same thing over and over and over? You're going to get the same results. That is the definition of insanity for those of you who don't know. We have to change that. So the silver lining in this tragedy in the loss of this God and his little goddess that we were gone way too soon. The silver lining that we can take from that is embody that energy of the greatness. Kobe was a philanthropist. He was a humanitarian. He was an entrepreneur. He was a scholar. He was an educator. He was a father. He was a husband. Was he perfect? No. But his imperfections help build an image where you couldn't even see it you couldn't even feel it and sure you're gonna have some haters because again you have a balance of things right so you're gonna have some that respect him and some that are very disrespectful like that lady on national tv she knew what she was saying but regardless of that Take that silver lining from that experience and say, you know what? Life is short. Let me make sure my affairs are in order. Thankfully, the NBA has a clause in their contract where it makes the players mandatory have their life affairs in order. But not everybody has that. So make sure your affairs are in order because we never know when it's our time. You don't want the government poking and prodding and having control over your body. You know that happens. 
If you're a certain age and you're incapacitated and you can't speak for yourself, the government takes control over what's going on. Not your spouse always, not your children always. You got to have that stuff together in order. I guarantee you that Vanessa and his other three girls are all taken care of. Get in order. Because like my grandfather who turns 100 this year, like my grandfather says, the graveyard has all size tombstones. Meaning no set age is for when you to say, okay, I don't need life insurance now because I'm here. I don't need to do a will now because I'm too young. And make it count. If you stand in the mirror today and you ask yourself is what I'm about to go do something I want to do. And if the answer is no, too many times in a row, you need to switch it up. You need to switch it up immediately. Change it. And start building the momentum the other way. Something's got to give. There's too much negativity going around. And you can choose to not be a part of that. Something happens in my area, in my city. You know what I do? Not my reality. That war, not my reality. Now I do have a child in the military. But I guarantee you. I guarantee you. That she will not be caught up in that mess. Not my reality. Thank you, Joe. It's her. It's my oldest. You've met her. Right? Not my reality. School shootings, not my reality. CNN, not my reality. MSNBC, not my reality. Love and hip hop, not my reality. Not my reality. Because that's not what I'm feeding myself. I'm not feeding my reality with ratchetness and negativity. That's not what I want. So therefore, I'm not going to feed my senses that. Because then my brain is going to digest that. So, I'm going to wrap it up. I've had a day. I've had a long day. But in all, in all seriousness, you can choose so simply. It literally is just a decision. I promise you. I'm not telling you anything that I have not tried. I'm not telling you anything that I don't put into practice myself. Those of you who knew, know me, who have known me, for at least 10 years, 15 years. Shit, if you've known me for five years, <laughs> I know you've seen a, a great change. So I'm not telling you all anything that I, I myself cannot put into practice for myself. I'm not telling you anything that I haven't tried. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. I'm not telling you anything that I don't practice myself. It takes a decision. Decide tonight before you go to sleep that when you wake up in the morning, you're going to move into things that are more effective for you. You're going to move into doing things that serve you and you're not going to start doing and you're going to stop doing things that do not serve you. You're going to stop doing things that don't bring you happiness. Screw what anybody else is talking about because they're not your reality. You have to start within and let it exude out. You going to work tomorrow to a job you don't like? That's okay. Not my reality. Not for long. You got a boss that you don't like? Hmm, I won't have to deal with you for much longer. They give you that distinct face. Just, hmm, yeah, okay, yep. Yeah. Little do you know what you got in store for you. Even if you don't know what's happening. Just keep talking. Because things have a way of moving for you. Because the universe is always inspiring for you in your favor. Because if something were to happen to you tomorrow, I guarantee you that employer is going to replace you like that. So start learning to replace them. If that seems to be your issue. You know, if it's a loved one in your family, cut them out. Shoot, cut them out. If it's a loved one in your family that's causing you harm, then they're not a loved one. Cut them out. Start feeding them with the same spoon that they feed you. I guarantee they're not going to like it. So, with that being said, like I said, I had a, a long night, but I definitely just wanted to come in and share my word and, of course, express my condolences. I'm not one to, uh, 
type too much or post too much. I'm getting better at that. But um, definitely, you know, don't don't allow this the sadness to consume you. Don't allow the fear to consume you. Don't allow the unknown to consume you. You can always find the bright side. You can always find the light at the end of the tunnel. You can always find that silver lining in your darkness, in your mind's eye. That's where it is. That's where the magic is, in your mind. Because you know what no one can take away from you is your mind. No one can take away your thoughts. That's how you win. You just keep thinking positive. Even if it's hard to believe it at the time, you keep thinking positive. My house may not be in the best condition right now, but not for long, not my reality. Because I'm gonna make a plan and it's gonna work. My job is not serving me right now, that's fine, because I'm gonna find another one that does. Because there's always something better out there for you, if it's to serve you, you understand? I hope I'm not. <laughs> but yeah. So that is all wealthy family. Just remember that we are all born with greatness inside of us. All of us. We all have it. We're all born with a purpose and it's inside of us. And it's just waiting for us to realize that so it can burst out and bust through the, the curtains with all the splendor and glory. But if you're not on a, the level of happiness if you don't feel the happiness within you it's never going to be able to come out it's never going to be able to express itself so you have to build up to that you got to rise to the occasion birds of a feather you can't expect wonderfulness to to come in your life if you're miserable all the time you can't expect blessings to come into your life if you're always blocking and shutting people out and shutting things out you got to do better as a whole and stop listening to the stereotypes of you can't be happy all the time. What's wrong with you? You're meant to be happy. You're meant to be happy. So until next time, wealthy family, if there's anything that I said that resonated with you today, be sure to share and comment. I'm going to post a replay. It'll be posted through my YouTube link. Um, subscribe to my channel, Ascending Infinite Goddess on YouTube. Um, <laughs> so I'll make sure I, I put the link down below in the comments. But until next time, wealthy family, stay positive, stay, stay active, and stay in that momentum of greatness. And I guarantee you that if you stick with it, you'll start to see the changes slowly, but surely. Until next time, wealthy family, peace and light.